Masi dibri ato kaya hasu aki. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for yet another day. In your presence, on this holy mountain, we thank you for your word that you have prepared for us. May you speak to our hearts, grant us the grace to meditate upon your word, and help us to share your word with others. We praise you forevermore, in Jesus' name, amen. Beloved in the Lord, you welcome to Mount Zion Daily Devotion. We have a theme that the Lord has given us for this month. We are talking about divine advantage, having divine advantage. Yesterday we learned that our divine advantage comes to play when we are connected with Christ Jesus. For we define an advantage as a condition or a circumstance that puts one in a favorable or a superior position. And when that advantage is occasioned by God, or generated or promoted by God, then it becomes divine. So by divine advantage, we are talking about a condition or circumstance that puts you one in a favorable position or superior position granted by God himself. Amen. So heaven has position those who have believed in Christ Jesus in a favorable way, in a superior way. And that is what the Spirit of God wants to teach us in these few days ahead of us. And today, we are dealing with the topic, power over sin and power over this world. That one divine advantage that we have as believers is that we have been granted power over sin. And we have also been granted power over this world. Hallelujah. We get into the scriptures and with the help of the Holy Spirit try to understand what he wants to teach us today. Power. Father, we have been granted power over this world and power over sin. In the book of 1 John chapter 5, reading from verse 1, Apostle John says that everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Hallelujah. What this scripture is teaching us is that when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, taking advantage of his finished work on the cross of Calvary, where he died to pay the price of our sins. And he was resurrected so that we can experience his life, the life of God. When anyone goes through this process or come to this place where he places his or her faith in Christ Jesus, that person is considered born of God. Hallelujah. Yesterday, we threw more light on Jesus' encounter with Nicodemus, where he told him specifically that it's not about stories, about, about what Jesus is doing, but the real deal is to be born again, or to be born anew, or to be born by the Spirit. And the process of getting to be born again it's when one believes in Jesus as his Lord and Savior, believes in his finished work on the cross. The Lord, our Father sent him to come and die for us. And John said that when one believes, that person is born of God. Born of God. Remember, we are talking about divine advantage, an advantage that comes from God. So when you believe you are born of God, 
And therefore you become a child of God. You are born into the family of God. And you become the God kind. Hallelujah. Then the verse 4 of the same first John chapter 5 says that for everyone born of God, a person who has believed in Christ, who is born of God, for such a person born of God, according to verse 4, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Amen. And our topic is power over sin and power over the world as an advantage, a divine advantage to all believers. And John is explaining to us that when we are born of God, when we place our faith in Christ and we are born of God, we are born as overcomers of this world. See, we cannot talk about birth without life. When we say a dog has given birth or has born, it means it has produced another dog which has a certain life, which was in the, go- in the, in the dog. So in the same way, when we are born of God, we are born with a certain life that is of God, a certain nature that is of God. And that nature misses overcomers of the world. Amen. By the nature of the life of God in us, we have received power to overcome this world. So we have been placed in a favorable and superior position over and above this world. We have received a divine advantage called power to overcome this world. So whoever is born of God is not subject to this world, but rather the world is subject to him. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. And he explains further that this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Which faith? The faith that we place in Jesus Christ, that occasion our new birth has given us power over this world. So if you are indeed born of God, reckon that you have a divine advantage, a divine advantage of power to overcome this world. Not just to overcome, that is your nature. You are an overcomer. You you don't just survive this world. You rule this world. You overcome whatever comes your way. There is a program within you a power program that makes you and gives you the ability to overcome. So you are not vulnerable to this world. This world does not overcome you or rule over you, but you rather overcome this world. When we say overcome this world, the world where there is cosmos, everything under this universe, the challenges you go through, the sicknesses, the diseases, the failures, the unexpected happiness, the disappointment, everything in this world, you have been programmed as an overcomer. You have power within you to overcome it because you have been born of God. For everyone born of God overcomes the world and says you overcome this world by your faith in Christ Jesus. And you overcome this world by walking and living by faith. You will take time to go through all that. But let it be said, and may you hear and understand that you have been born as an overcomer. And you, as you walk and practice your faith and live by the word of God, for faith comes by the word. That's what the book of Romans tells us. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by The message, and the message come by the word. So the more of the word you have inside of you, the more faith you have. And as you practice your faith, walk by faith, live by faith, as a child of God, you continually 
leave us an overcomer of this world. So everything in this world is subject to you. Hallelujah. So the verse 5 re-emphasizes the verse 4. Say, who is it that overcomes the world? Who is it that overcomes the world? It says, only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. God is those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God who have been born of God and have received that nature and power as an overcomer of this world. If you are born only by your mother, the world will overcome you. But if you are born again by the Father of all spirits, our Lord and our, our all, then you receive his life and power and nature to overcome this world. Amen. So if you are listening to us and you are not born again, we we'll give you the opportunity to do that at the right time. And when you are born anew and born of God, by believing Jesus, his son, as your Lord and personal Savior, that you receive the nature and the power to overcome everything that is in this world. You receive a divine advantage. Um, so get ready. Then we are told, Jesus told his disciples actually in John chapter 16, verse 33. He said that, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So in this world, there are troubles. But there is someone who has gone ahead of us and has overcome this world for us. So when we place our faith in him and receive him into our hearts and receive his life, we are made overcomers of this world because he has already, that which he has accomplished on the cross of Calvary, that victory is transferred to us. And by faith, we are able to walk and walk in that victory and live that life of victory. And that position us in an advantageous way. Without that, the world will trouble you. So of course, it says, in this way, you have trouble. <laughs> but the only way you can walk victoriously is believe in this Christ and be born of God. In that case, he that has overcome will also position you in that place and you will walk and live forever on this earth as an overcomer. Let's take how the Amplified classes explain this. St. John 16.33 said that I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. A man can live on this earth under perfect peace if his life has been placed in Christ Jesus, his faith has been placed in Jesus, and he has received Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior, and he has born of God and received the nature of God and the life of God, that overcoming and victorious life. He says, then you may have peace and confidence in this world. So, so, for he says that in this world, you will have tribulation and trials and distress and frustrations. See, th these four things are forever in this world. Tr tribulations, trials, distress, frustrations. But, according to Jesus, be of good cheer, take courage and be confident. For I have overcome the world. And I have deprived it of power to harm you. And I have conquered it for you. Hallelujah. So the reason why we can live and walk as overcomers of this world. And we have received that divine advantage. Is that Jesus has conquered this world for us. 
and he has deprived this word of power to harm us. Let me read it again. Since I have told you this thing so that you may know that, so that in me you may have perfect peace. In me means when you are born, again, your, your life has been placed in me. You are born of God, born into the family of God, and you are in Christ. So in that life, it says you have perfect peace and confidence. For in this world, you have tribulation, you have trials, you have distress and frustration. But be of good cheer, take courage, for I have overcome the world, and I have deprived it of power to harm you, and have conquered it for you. So, as a child born of God, this world has been deprived of the power to harm you. No matter how things stand around you, all things come up to you. They cannot harm you, according to Jesus. If you have this life, you have been placed in a favorable and superior position of advantage to the extent that the failures, the diseases, the pandemics, of this world, anything that has happened in this world has been deprived of power to harm you. Whether it is sickness or disease, it could be terminal or manageable. It cannot harm you, full stop. Hallelujah. You have been given power over this world and power over sin. That is your favorable and superior advantage that you have as a child of God. And you must begin to meditate on it till it settles in your heart and enjoy this life, power over this world. He said that, he says, I have conquered it for you. <laughs> I have overcome the world for you. He has overcome this world. Well, that is why he died that disgraceful death on the cross to pay for our sins, and also to conquer death and the devil himself. He took the keys from him. And when he rose, he told the disciples, all power in the heavens on the earth have been granted to me. Go, go where? Go in this power. Amen. He has given us power over this earth. Then number two, we are saying that we have also been granted power over sin. Sin is a very dangerous animal in this world. Sin separated man from God, and sin still separates men from God. Sin is like a disease to eat you away, to eat the glory of God away from your life. When man sin, the Bible says he fell short of the glory of God. He lost what makes him a God kind of person. But thank be to Jesus. Romans chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3 says that therefore there is now no condemnation, no adjudging guilty of wrong for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the details of the flesh, but after the details of the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed us from the law of sin and of death. So we have been freed from the power of sin and the power of death. <laughs> because we have received the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now by our faith in Christ Jesus, we, there has been a shift. We are no longer under the law of sin. We are under the dominion of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. So you have been freed from sin and the hold of sin. The price of sin has been paid and the power of sin has been broken over our lives. We are no longer under the dominion of sin and dominion of death. We are under the control of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. He continues to say that for God has done what the law could not do. For his power was weakened by the flesh 
which is the entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit. And God, by sending his own son in the form of a sinful flesh and as an offering for sin, God, through that condemned sin in the flesh, he subdued sin, overcame sin, and deprived it of its power over all that accept that sacrifice. Hallelujah. The last bit. When God sent his own son Jesus to die for us, he came in the guise of a sinful flesh. And he, he constituted the offering for sin. He has paid the full price for our sins, including the sin that you are going to commit tomorrow. He has paid for it all. <laughs> and say, God, through his death, has condemned sin. He has, and he used three words, he has subdued, this is the Amplified Classic, overcame and deprived sin of its power over all, all who accept the sacrifice of Christ Jesus. So now that you believe in Christ and have been born again, the power of sin has been subdued, overcame, and deprived of its power over you. This is a divine advantage that you have. Hallelujah. And you need to know it. You need to eat it. And you need to be able to walk in this power that is within you. Don't just yield to any kind of sin because you have power over it. Anytime sin is encroaching, encroaching at your door, like it did to uh, that boy Cain, God to him, sin is crashing around your door. So you rise up above sin because you have power over it. Amen. You have power over sin. So when you read Romans chapter 8, verse 37, Paul crowns it all and said that no, in all these things, in all that we go through in this earth, on uh, this world, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Who is the him? He's talking about Jesus Christ who loved us and gave his life to, for us. The Amplified Classic says that yet I'm, I made all these things. We are more than conquerors and we gain a surpassing victory through Christ Jesus who loved us. So that is who, who we are. We have divine advantage, power over sin and power over this world. And we can live a victorious life because we are more than conquerors and we have gained a surpassing victory through Christ Jesus and the life that he has given unto us. May you meditate on God's word and may you be strengthened by the divine advantage he's given you, having power over this world and having power over us. The Lord bless you for receiving his word. And if you have listened to us and do not know Jesus, we want to recommend him to you. The Bible says those of us who are born, who believe in Christ Jesus, we are born of God. And we have received power over sin and power over this world. Just pray this simple prayer with us. Say, dear Lord, I accept that I am a sinner. And today... I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. For I know that Jesus, you died for my sins and you were raised for my justification. I place my faith in you and I receive you into my heart. If you pray this prayer sincerely, the Lord has saved you. You are born again. You are born of God and born into the family of God. Please find a Bible believing church. Let them baptize you into the body of Christ and also uh, grant you a discipleship tutelage so that you can grow and become a great Christian. The Lord bless you for receiving Christ today. Amen. Beloved, shall we share the benediction? May the Lord bless, increase you, grant you grace to know and to believe and to walk by this revelation that you have divine advantage over sin and over this world. You have power 
over sin, power over this world. And none of this can harm you. Shalom, peace, and life to you and your family. Amen.